So hi, this is uh, welcome to the uh, talk on the, the the intro talk on the uh, v for the VMware SIG. We're going to talk about the vSphere cloud provider primarily here. Um, I'm this person, Steve Wong. Uh, I come from Los Angeles, California, in the U.S. Uh, apologize that even though my name is Wong, I don't speak Chinese. We do have a guest here to provide in interpreter service, Hui, if we need it. Um, and I've been active in Kubernetes since 2015. Um, I started working on Kubernetes storage in the storage SIG and recently became uh, co-chair with Fabio of the VMware SIG. Uh, Fabio, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Fabio, Fabio Raposelli, uh, directly from Italy. <laughs> Um, and he's jet lagged, so yeah, I'm totally jet lagged. So apologize for give me an eye signal to poke him if he falls yeah. asleep. Uh, been working at VMware for about six years now. Been mostly involved in all the open source projects we had uh, in the past, and now you know focusing 100% on Kubernetes. Uh, so we work on everything that has to do with upstream contributions to Kubernetes, either be uh, you know core Kubernetes or you know things like Cluster API, Cloud Provider. Uh, and um, CSI plugins and so on. So we have an abstract here. Uh, I'm not going to stop on this slide. You, you know it if you showed up here, I think, but it's in the deck so you can read it later and make sure you found the, the right one. That's the only reason it was put here. And the deck's been uploaded to that SCED site, so you should be able to get it in PDF form when this is over. Uh, the agenda we're going to get into a cloud provider intro, this, just what it is and why it exists in Kubernetes, then particulars of the vSphere cloud provider. Um, it's currently, like most cloud providers, implemented in what's called an in-tree form. Well, we'll explain that later, moving to out-of-tree. Uh, then we'll wrap up with some information on how to get involved with the VMware SIG, which if you're running Kubernetes on top of uh, vSphere, you should get involved with the SIG. It's a great forum for uh, getting support, sharing information with other users, and even communicating to the developers working on it what features you'd like to have implemented in the, in the future. Um, so that'll be it. And um, Fabio, I'll let you take over from here for yeah. a while. So we wanted to focus on uh, Cloud Provider um, specifically because it's one of the projects we were sponsoring as a SIG. And it's the one that is, um, is has recently been released as an auto tree provider. So we wanted to highlight that we have uh, this cloud provider out there. and wanted to explain the changes that are occurring because it's not simply that we're moving the code, you know, out of the Kubernetes core repo, but we're actually making some, you know, significant changes to how the cloud provider operates and how the old um, framework that was previously um, inside the Kubernetes core and how the code was structured there is now changing and, and shaping and diverging into two separate projects. So the Kubernetes cloud provider, uh, we're now talking the in-tree cloud provider, so the, the, the code that is still part of Kubernetes core. It allows uh, Kubernetes to operate you know, on various platforms. In our case, the, the cloud provider here we're talking about is for vSphere. It's uh, Basically handling the identification of the Kubernetes nodes on the platform itself. So the platform in this case is vSphere. So the cloud provider reaches back to vCenter or to the individual ESX host and basically associates the EUID of the VMs that are running Kubernetes back to the Kubernetes cluster themselves. It handles uh, tagging for zone support. So we're now supporting um, Availability zones inside, inside Kubernetes and vSphere, so we can tag uh, zones inside vSphere, the vSphere clusters, and you're able to make sure that you have separate zones, separate availability zones for your nodes, and the infrastructure supports that. Uh, given that vSphere is, you know, mostly de deployed on-prem, there's no clear distinction of an what an availability zone means. So it's not like we have a public cloud where we have, you know data centers that are established and we know that are constants across the platform. Here we have deployments that can vary, you know, very significantly from, you know, one user to another. People may have multiple data centers with multiple availability zones inside. People may have one single vCenter that are spanning across multiple data centers, spanning across multiple regions. So we have implemented this way of tagging 
the specific nodes with a label that indicates what's the what's the zone that the node is currently in. And and this is something that actually has changed over the years. It's now changing in Auto Tree. Is that the cloud provider that is currently inside the Kubernetes core handles persistent volumes, while the Auto Tree cloud provider will not handle persistent volumes anymore. Persistent volumes will be handled over to the CSI plugin, which is a different uh, interface. There's also other uh, cloud provider features that we're not currently implementing because we're missing the facilities inside vSphere to support them. We do have support for these services, but not inside the cloud provider. We're actually using uh, other products, things like uh, NSX or things like OVS and OVN to do these, to support these features, but they're not supported inside a cloud provider yet. We're actually looking forward to get some uh, use case from actually end users that are running these uh, nodes in production or in, in test clusters to figure out what would be the best way to implement them. We do have some, you know, precondition in deploying the vSphere cloud provider on vSphere. We have, a, you know, most of the popular Linux distributions are supported, obviously. Uh, we do have a few specific constraints that we want to make sure that you're aware of. Uh, VNAs must have valid DNS names. Uh, we should have disk enable UID set to true in all the advanced options of the VM. This is something that is not by default enabled in when you create a new VM on vSphere. So if you're creating your cluster, make sure you have this, this um, parameter set. Uh, obviously, you should have VMware tools installed. And if you're creating a template from scratch, you should be using a per virtualized SCSI um, controller inside the, the VM. You obviously need a, a, a service account on vCenter in order to connect to it and make sure that the uh, cloud provider can connect to vCenter and get the information it needs. And optionally, you can do all this through GoVC, which is a Go-based client for vCenter and ESX API, which is obviously very uh, handy when you're doing this kind of configuration from the CLI instead of using the web client. Here's something that uh, is, we're actually trying to figure out what would be the best way forward. Uh, this is the configuration file for the, for the cloud provider. This is the current version that is used in Tree. Uh, for Auto Tree, we're maintaining the same format, so we're keeping the same standard, and we want to share the same configuration file across multiple Auto Tree components. So today we have two major Auto Tree components that are replacing the In Tree Cloud Provider. These two are the Auto Tree Cloud Provider and the CSI plugin. We're trying to have both these components share the same configuration file, and we're trying to figure out if it makes sense for people to use this same configuration file for both or not. So right now we're trying to focus on this. Uh, if you see up there, uh, the qubit has to be started with specific flags. So in our case, right now for the entry, we have dash dash cloud provider vSphere. This means that we're, it's using the entry cloud provider. If you want to use the auto tree cloud provider, we can still use uh, the provisioning of the volumes done through the internal, the in-tree cloud provider, and use the out of tree cloud provider to do everything else. We, we're trying to figure out if it makes sense for people to test this and use this. We tested it and it works. But as I was saying before, we're trying to externalize the um, volume management to through a CSI plugin. Unfortunately, the CSI plugin uh, is not considered stable yet. It's not considered GA yet. Uh, hopefully, it will be GA with Kubernetes 113. So we're not, we're not saying to people, you should, use in, you should be using this in production. We just keep telling people to use the entry cloud provider. But if there's someone that wants to test the waters and see if it works better for them to use out of tree cloud provider and have a test cluster, they may want to you know, sacrifice to this and do some testing, we will be very appreciated. Fabio, maybe I'll, since this is an intro section, I'll add just in case somebody's not familiar with CSI. On Kubernetes itself, there is a roadmap to move the storage plugins, which used to be in tree, meaning they're compiled and built into Kubernetes, out of the tree and make them remotely installable and manageable plugins. So that's what CSI is about. And that's kind of happening concurrently with the cloud provider going out of tree. So um, they, in a way, are 
a cloud provider and a CSI is independent, but there are de dependencies going on on some cloud platforms. Anyway, take it back. Yes, there's there's actually more than a few dependencies. We're uh, discussing all these removal and these changes in SIG Cloud Provider, uh, which is a bi-weekly meeting every Wednesday. It's actually very interesting to see the work happening there. Uh, and all this work is happening at the same time, and unfortunately, a lot of, there's a lot of uh, a lot of this code is inter a lot of this code is intertwined, so it's sometimes very difficult. There's a lot of blockers across the project to make sure that we're able to extract these piece of code, you know, in, in an effective way. So it's uh, it's 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 a challenge, but it was also in a lot of people involved. There's a, there's a lot of progress happening. Uh, a lot of effort coming from you know multiple people, multiple um, companies sponsoring this work. So it's it's very exciting work. As we were saying, uh, we're moving out of tree, and I mentioned before that basically what we have is we decoupling all the dependencies from the cloud providers from within the um, Kubernetes core and make sure that we can consume all these components. In a, in, a, in a way that makes sense for Kubernetes core, and Kubernetes core becomes just the core. It doesn't have any provider-dependent code inside it. There's a cap that is linked here, where uh, basically all this is collected, and there's a lot of information on what is going on and what is happening in the process, speci specifically for uh, what is happening inside SIG Cloud Provider. And as, uh, as I was mentioning, and Steve was mentioning as well, uh, CSI storage plugins are the way forward for everything that has to do with storage in Kubernetes. So everything that was happening before in tree, all the volume management, so, uh, volume management code, um, the volume, uh, um, I believe the name, the volume drivers that we had before in Kubernetes core are going away in favor of CSI. So everything is going away and being for storage and being replaced by CSI. And Again, CSI will be the way forward, but again, they're both, both cloud provider, external cloud provider, and CSI are still not uh, considered GA in Kubernetes, so uh, still a few releases to go. Yeah, I think there'll be a period starting in the release that comes out in December where the, you could first entertain using a CSI volume uh, plugin, but the legacy way would continue to be supported for a year or more and there will be a period where there would be an overlap. You might, however, have a situation where going to the external cloud provider for some cloud providers is going to concurrently force you to go to external storage plugins. The idea is that um, at the very end of this you know, long road that we get, we're gonna get there at some point, we're gonna have a way to you know, mix and match cloud providers and CSI providers uh, in a way that is easier for everybody to use and consume. So obviously we're gonna have a vSphere CSI driver that you know make use of all the uh, storage components that vSphere gives us. But if you have like a different storage and you don't wanna use, uh, you, don't wanna, you don't wanna use vSphere uh, storage, you can wanna use something, I don't know, uh, something iSCSI that is external to vSphere, just replacing the CSI or adding the CSI plugin for that specific storage is gonna be much easier than it is today where you have just one choice, which is you have to choose your, your cloud provider and you're gonna stick with that. And the, the volume functionality and everything is gonna be just for that cloud, cloud provider. So this is happening. Um, all the development for both the cloud provider and the CSI storage plugins are happening in the same repo, which is Kubernetes slash uh, cloud provider vSphere. So there's a lot of churn there. There's a lot of, we have meetings, um, and Steve is gonna cover all the uh, all the appointments that we had, uh, we have every week, every, every other week, under various efforts. Um, and yeah, that's it. Back to you, Steve. Okay, so getting involved with the VMware SIG, if you do deploy Kubernetes on vSphere, and by the way, this is any, any implementation of Kubernetes. So VMware happens to have some commercially supported distributions of Kubernetes, but we, this SIG and the Kubernetes project supports 
other Kubernetes distros, for example, Red Hat OpenShift, Mesospheres, DCOS, um, just compiling from the open source project, building it yourself and deploying it with QBADM, that is supported. And if you're hosting it on vSphere VMs, you would uh, get great benefit from installing the vSphere cloud provider because it will give you access uh, in a full featured way to consuming the storage that's already in place in the vSphere hypervisor. So this SIG uh, is, I think at this point, all the major cloud providers have a SIG with meetings at some schedule. We're operating these meetings at, in Zoom on a bi-weekly schedule. Um, if you join that Zoom, uh, if you're an end user, you're welcome to come there and discuss feature requests, uh, requests for support. There might be better vectors for support than that, but you're free to come there. What you'll get on that call is uh, participation by a lot of the engineers directly. And uh, other vectors for support would be Slack or opening GitHub issues. But if it's deeply technical and you think that uh, it would involve um, engineering aspects, this, the Zoom meetings might be a great venue to get involved with. Um, the mechanism is to join, like all SIGs on Kubernetes, is to, they will have a Google group. Uh, you join as a member. And um, th some of the documents and the meeting notes are restricted to members only because we allow people to suggest agenda items. And we'd like, uh, you know, there have been some incidents in the past where people, hooligans, go in there and graffiti these documents. So you should join the group first with an, you have to give an email, and uh, then you'll have access to the agenda and notes documents. We have these Zoom meetings, they're video recorded and published on YouTube. Um, and there is a Kubernetes, we do have a channel on the Kubernetes Slack, so you're welcome to ask questions there or give advice. If by chance you want to help us build any of this thing, any of this stuff, we're amenable to that. Uh, if you're just getting started, uh, perhaps a great way to get started is to start helping us do the documentation, but we're open to developers as well. So like all of Kubernetes, this is a community effort and we'd love to see you get involved. Um, so I guess I, I just spoke a lot of this, but we have our regular SIG meeting, so that's the big umbrella encompassing everything about running Kubernetes on VMware. We are working on code for the cloud provider, and that has additional, more detailed meetings. So this is more a developer focus since the Kubernetes project is asking every cloud provider to move their code out of tree. This is the forum where the developers doing that are talking very specifically about the coding and testing uh, involved with that effort of doing the new version of the cloud provider. There is also something going on called the cluster API, and this is a new movement within Kubernetes that would attempt to come up with an API standard enough so that you could install uh, Kubernetes under an automated process. By that I mean with Kubernetes, when you deploy it, you've got a collection of one or more master nodes that do your control plane, as well as one or more uh, worker nodes that implement your, your application workloads. And the install process, say on bare metal, involves um, getting the machine, installing a Linux distribution, and then from there, bootstrapping it up using, I think the, the only supported way coming out of the Kubernetes project itself is KubeADM. There are some other ones, KubeSpray, some things that are mainly cloud, public cloud centric, but there is this attempt to come up with an API that would even uh, allow you to provision VMs and potentially take it a step farther than that and even do installations, replications. Um, this is still a work in progress and we do have these bi-weekly meetings on that, and we welcome anybody to come on board that and voice an opinion as to how you'd like to see it work or uh, help us write code. Uh, 
Can, so, I, can I add something on that? Sure. A cluster API as an effort is very early. So there is a lot of there's a lot of change happening there. So if you're interested in learning more about cluster API, by all means join the the meeting that is here biweekly for the vSphere provider. Uh, there's also a cluster API working group that is meeting every week on Tuesday. That is the main umbrella where cluster API is discussed. Uh, again, there's a lot of and that's the generic Kubernetes wide one. Not yes, that's the to generic vSphere, right? one. Not specific, not specific to to vSphere, but it's also very interesting because there's a lot of change happening these days. So, like right now, we're moving everything from API aggregation to CRDs, for example. There's a lot of changes, so it's very early. There's a lot of influence that can be can be you know can be made on the project right now. So, if you're interested in this, you know, creating this new lifecycle manager for Kubernetes nodes. Uh, please join that too. I think in general, the people who should be super interested in that is anybody, if you're right, if you work for somebody making your own Kubernetes distribution, you probably are very interested in that topic. Um, there are some people, I think SAP, for example, works on a tool to deploy to multiple under, underlying platforms, and they're interested in coming up with an automated solution for that. So if you're in that category of starting from nothing and getting a Kubernetes cluster going, and one of your targeted platforms happens to be vSphere, this, this, this section is for you. Some of these other ones are more general or general usage. Um, so these are how to get involved on a personal level to join the meetings. If, if you wanna just look at the code and see where that code lives, uh, these three locations are where these live within the GitHub repository. So it is open source. You can go there and look at it. Um, you could theoretically start logging issues in there, although I think at this stage, particularly for the ones that are still early stage work in progress, I'd suggest joining the meeting might be a better vector than jumping right to a GitHub issue. Yeah, right now, um, the Intri Cloud provider is mature enough that we can usually triage bugs and issues that are coming in uh, pretty often, actually. Uh, the Auto Tree Cloud provider is now starting to get some issues from uh, users that are, are actually using uh, the Auto Tree in test cluster and so on. Cluster API is so early that there's no real you know, user base for it right now. So it's mostly developers trying to you know, get everything on the same page for all the providers. There's also another meeting that is happening and that is not there yet, which I don't know exactly the details, which is the CSI uh, provider for vSphere. Uh, this is happening, bi happening bi-weekly as well, but I don't know. It, it just really started a week ago, so we don't have that information yet. I, don't, I forgot to add it to the slide. But if you're interested in CSI and storage in general in vSphere, uh, please join the SIG and We'll let you know when the meeting is. I will try to uh, make sure that we publish that on the community calendar as well. And speaking of cloud providers in general, we've got a guest in the audience here. Andrew is chair of the cloud provider SIG. So after we break up with Q&A, if you've got any questions you need to cloud provider, he's, he's the guy right here. Um, we'll move no on, pressure. I think. Uh, time for questions, but let me introduce during the questions, uh, Hui here is a VMware engineer, and he speaks Mandarin, should that prove to be useful, but he is deeply knowledgeable in the cloud provider as well. So you're welcome to come up here on stage too, and let's, if anybody's got any questions, I think you'll have to give up the microphone. Yeah, if you have any question and, and you don't feel like speaking in English, just ask your question. Uh, we have Hui that helps us. <laughs> Uh, oh, the slides will be actually are are. Acceptable or not? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the question was, um, can we have the meetings notes and recordings? These slides are published on the schedule okay. of the conference, yeah. so you can just download this and follow the link from there. Yeah, the SCAD app associated with the conference, and if you get it, these are hot links. Okay. So this will actually take you to the meeting notes. If you follow it, uh, without joining the group, you can't edit that. 
But if you join the group, you can actually add items, things you'd like to see covered in the meeting agenda for the next meeting, and we'd welcome people to do that. So you're free to put topics on the air. Please give us a, optimally, if it requires us recruiting somebody to speak on the topic you want to hear about, give us about a week and to, to try to find a speaker. But we're completely open to having users uh, get involved and uh, suggest to us what you want to learn about. And I just realized that recordings are actually on YouTube, uh, so I'm not sure if there's any access problem, but uh, actually that's actually an interesting thing to know. Uh, yeah, it's not our doing, it's a Kubernetes-wide issue at this point, yes. but uh, I've, I've heard there might be ways to get it on VPNs, but uh, no, I mean, it, we, it don't be, we didn't pick it, so. It would be interesting to see if there is a, like an alternative and we can you know, figure out a way to upload it in, you know, you know, two websites at the same time. Yeah, uh, it's still you know it's still a video file that can be uploaded pretty much anywhere. Just you know figuring out and understanding what would be the best way for you to consume this. Uh, actually, this is good, a very valid thing. We appreciate some feedback on that. And then I appreciate that. Unfortunately, for users outside of the Western United States, the time the times that these meetings occur at might may or may not be convenient. Uh, I know that the China-hosted Project Harbor uh, has meetings organized for China, and when I try to join those, <laughs> I have to wake up in the middle of the night, and I suspect that, unfortunately for you, maybe that's the case on the VMware uh, SIG meetings, but uh, it is what it is. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you for coming. Um, are you going to attempt to to read that, Fabio? Or, oops. No, um, I just I don't I don't know how to read that. <laughs> but, uh, I know how to use Google Translate. He hasn't been called on yet, so. <laughs> okay. Thank you for coming. <laughs>